Hi, I'm Graham Taylor of Potted History, and today I'm working on a Bronze Age beaker. Beakers often considered to be the sort of threshold between the Neolithic and the Bronze Age. Um, certainly they arrive at a time when metals are first coming to Britain for initially copper and gold and later bronze. Um, this one is one from the Greater Stonehenge landscape from Normanton Down, one from the Wilsford Barrow Group. Uh, it's quite highly decorated and quite finely finished. Um, I think this is Beaker 1502 or Find 1502 and it needs to be very, very accurate. It's going to a museum, a very important museum, so I'm um, uh, just um, laying out the decoration to make sure that the decoration I put on it is as accurate in its layout as it possibly can be. And what I've done is I have enlarged this uh, drawing of the beaker by about 10% so that it fits the wet pot and it gives me just the positions of each of those horizontal rings of comb decoration, bone comb decoration in this case. So that's where all those horizontals go and off we go. And as you can see, this is going to take some time. About halfway now. Still got a long way to go. It takes pretty much as long, if not longer, to decorate one of these beakers than it does to make one. Last circuit, going round, and you'll see that occasionally I don't get the overlaps quite right, but depending on the beaker, and in this case on the original there are places on it where the overlaps don't quite correspond, I will leave them. I won't go back and try and correct that. And I also don't try to be too accurate in the precise alignment of the rings, because again, in the original, they're not. They are somewhat wayward in places. Um, what I need to do now is to put in the crisscross lines in the slightly wider bands here. And I'm going to do that not with a narrow tool, as you might expect, but because I've got a curved bone tool, curved edge to it, what I can do is I can produce diagonal lines within those boundaries quite happily without having to resort to a different tool. I'm going to have to put my hand across there because I need to work from below. There we go. But you can see that those crosses, those crisscrosses, can be put in quite happily just with the same tool without showing any excess either side of the band, although you do occasionally get those sort of overlaps. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to work around. I'm going to put in diagonals going one way. I'll come back round and put the diagonals the other way. You can do the crisscross as you go, but quite frankly, it involves having to keep turning the tool round and round. And it's much easier to do it by working round. And in fact, I always say that I can see when a potter is right or left handed by which diagonal is done first. If, if you're right-handed, like me, it's easier to support the pot in your left hand and decorate with your right hand, and therefore it's easier to put in the lower left to upper right diagonal first, and then come back and put the other one across it where I, by turning the pot a little bit towards you. I think that's an indication of right or left handedness of the potter. The other thing that happens while you're busy doing this, while you're putting this decoration in, is you actually burnish the inside of the pot because your hand sitting inside, working round and round the pot, tends to burnish the inside of the pot. And I, I do often see sort of notes in excavation saying that the beaker was burnished inside, which actually is a really difficult thing to do if you're gonna try and do it um, by 
putting a tool down inside there, but it happens naturally while you're decorating your pot. Okay, back in a while when I'm a bit further on. Just finishing up now. It's taken me the best part of an hour to decorate this pot. It's a slow process and it does speak of care, I suppose, for the occupant of the grave in which it was placed. It also speaks of the fact that time has been taken to decorate it, suggesting that the time is available to do that and certainly Certainly with Bronze Age pottery, one's seeing an awful lot more highly decorated pottery where the time taken is certainly a lot more than is necessary for a vessel that would be purely functional. Uh, this is a photograph from a few years ago when I was making the replicas for the Stonehenge Visitor Centre and I was very kindly given access to the original pots and in this case the original sherds of this beaker giving some idea of the state they were in when they were found. If you enjoyed that why not subscribe to the channel? You get to know lots that we're doing at Potter's History. Um, not only prehistoric pottery, but Roman, Anglo-Saxon, all sorts of ancient ceramics. Uh, just click the uh, subscribe button.